Hello, this is POG TV, weekly news show produced by second year journalism students at Conestoga College. I'm Sandra Shimprega. And I'm Tushar Sethi. People under 25 living in Ontario will be very happy as the start of this year a new prescription plan went into effect. It covers 100% of a drug cost. Premier Kathleen Wien unveiled OHIP Plus in the budget plan, which will be the first of its kind to be offered in Ontario. Children, students over 14 can apply. The plan covers 100% of the cost of prescription drugs for anyone aged 24 and under. Melissa Pavo, the Conestoga student, says it would benefit her playing for her inhalers completely under the new plan. I'm someone who, you know, I have asthma, so I have to always refill my um, inhalers and everything, and the school only covers so much of it in certain kinds. Like one inhaler that I take is like $120 and it only lasts me a month and the school actually doesn't cover it. So I have to pay for that out of pocket. The program started on January 1st and extended to all 4,400 medications covered by the Ontario Drug Benefit Program at an estimated cost of $465 million per year. The strike had a lasting impact on college students. Their confidence and motivation has been down since returning from the strike. Thankfully, there has been a deal made with the college. Spoke TV's Christian Apostolovsky has more. 2017 marked the longest Ontario college strike, having an adverse effect on students. Now that the semester is finally wrapping up, the students have felt the pressure, and it has been a negative experience for many. Uh, getting back into school, getting back into the swing, I definitely had a lot of my initiative uh, and uh, work uh, affected. Uh, definitely didn't get the grades that I had planned to, um, which uh, affected my confidence overall. Montero, like many other students, has been feeling the pressure of the short semester. The motivation and confidence of many students has been heavily affected. Conestoga College President John Tibbetts talks about the impact on students. The total was over 25,000. That's a lot of students that left. And uh, so there's no question in my mind the biggest uh, impact I mean, sure, it was a difficult time for management, it was a difficult time for many faculty, but by far the biggest uh, problem was for the students. Talks have been ongoing since the students returned. The question on many minds was when will there be a new contract? With an arbitrator present, there has been some good news about the negotiations. The good news is today we found out that uh, there is a settlement, an arbitrated settlement, and, uh, um, and this is a four-year collective agreement, so uh, we know that we have four years at least of labor peace. The Ontario college strike was a very complicated matter on all fronts, but all parties were happy to see it finally end in students back in class. For Spoke TV, I'm Krishna Postolovsky. Every winter when we get only few hours of sun per day, many individuals get seasonal affective disorder. Sandra Shimpraga has more. The Kitchener Public Library is offering help to people negatively affected by the lack of sunlight. The idea came from Robin Mozambder, a PhD neuroscience candidate, when he was a guest librarian last winter. I went to my doctor and I said, you know, my mood is really terrible in the winter. Um, it's making things a little um, difficult and unbearable and I'm not too sure what to do about it. And so he suggested I get uh, a light therapy lamp. That's easier said than done because that type of lamp is pricey. I thought about getting one for myself, but they're like $200. I can't afford that. And yeah, it feels good. The Kitchener Public Library supported Mazamder's initiative to open a library. Thankfully, we, we had the benefit of a grant from two local agencies, the Waterloo Wellington um, Local Health Integration Network and the Kitchener um, Downtown Community Health Center. They gave us a $3,000 grant. Minus 20 today, right? I don't want to go outside in that kind of weather, but if you have a lamp like this, maybe that uh, gets us the, uh, the benefits of the, that we miss out of the sunshine. Doctors recommend that you sit under the lamp for 30 minutes per day. You can come to any of kitchen public libraries and use them at your own convenience. You don't even have to show your library card. For Spoke TV, I'm Sandra Schimprega. One of the most popular New Year's resolutions is to get more organized. If you have things you don't need or love anymore, you can donate them to the Library of Things that provides jobs for people with disabilities and wants to reduce waste. The KW Library of Things is accepting donations of pre-loved items at 91 Moore Avenue in Kitchener. Based on a community member's response to question what items are they interested in borrowing the most, the library will have gardening equipment, hand tools and power tools, kitchen appliances and camping gear available for borrowing. 
by paying an annual $40 membership, people will be able to borrow items quickly. The library will be open soon. A common sight in most coffee shops is people on their laptops and phones. But there's a local cafe offering an environment where people can take a break from technology and connect with one another in person. This cafe operates with minimal technology. Casada Blacks keeps us connected with more on this story. City Cafe operates low-tech while still providing their customers with fresh baked goods, coffee, and a community atmosphere. Well, our store, we don't, we don't have a phone, we don't have Wi-Fi, uh, we don't have an electronic um, point-of-sale system, um, okay. uh, no fax machine, uh, as, as low-tech as possible. Without a cash register, staff is always available to make change. City Cafe offers a low-tech environment, but delivers a high level of community connecting. If the others out there are offering Wi-Fi and uh, yeah, billing off their phone and various other things that are, that are now becoming available, it has to be an experience where you walk into the store and you know the people there and you feel valued and respected and that you leave and every time you leave that store you say, I just had a great experience. Customers enjoy socializing and networking with other members of the community. Our favorite cafe because after a while it becomes an extended family. It's almost like a cheers bar. The people are friendly, the food is good and it's a good start to every morning. Connecting with people in your community doesn't have to be through technology. It can also be done by visiting your local cafe. For Spoke TV, I'm Cassetta Black. Starting in December 2019, the BlackBerry App Store will no longer be available. The BlackBerry travel site is shutting down in February 2018, and the Playbook video calling service will expire in March 2018. Customers still using the older BlackBerry devices will get a discount on the new Android-powered Key One and Motion. BlackBerry will come out with more new Android devices and a new BlackBerry operating system in 2020. Getting fit is usually a popular New Year's resolution, but fitness clubs say that only 8% of people tend to stick to going to the gym if they enroll in the first three months of the year. Varshas Sriganesh has more. The new year has brought in an influx of people to the gyms of KW. Staying fit and exercising has always been one of the most popular New Year resolutions. Chris Carmichael, the general manager for Crunch Fitness, says that January is their busiest month. Well, at the best of times when you join a gym, most people, you're lucky if you get 30% uh, usage out of things. Uh, traditionally in our industry, if you sign up in the months of December, January and February, you have an 8% chance of succeeding long term. The regulars at the gym say that fitness stations are always filled with people in the first two months, but a number of people quit in March. Stuart Thau, a two-year member of Crunch Fitness, talks about why the numbers reduce at the gym. Like for me, being here for so long, it kind of sucks because now there's more people, like it's more packed. But I know that it's going to be like empty soon anyways because like people don't really stick to their New Year's resolutions or goals or whatever. So they don't come for like the month and then they just take off and instead of now I have more space to myself again. Travis Albastiel, the district manager for Anytime Fitness, talks about how they touch base with people who are no longer members. The people that do drop off, we do reach out to them and make sure that they keep accountable to their goals. Individual capacity and motivation is said to be the key to success for gym resolutions. With 2018 comes new fitness goals. It is seen that people with a drive are the ones that tend to succeed and stay. For Spoke TV, I'm Varsha Sriganesh. Thanks, Varsha. And now with weather, here's Tushar. Thanks, Sandra. Here's weather. On Tuesday, we have a high of minus 2 and a low of minus 7. On Wednesday, it shows cloudy and rainy, so there will be a high of 4 degrees and a low of minus 1. On Wednesday, we have sunny and cloudy both, so the high will be the 7 degrees and the low will be 3 degrees. On Fridays and Saturday, it's going to be cloudy and rainy both. With the, on Friday, with a high of 1 degree and the low of minus 3. And on Saturday, there will be high of minus 7 and the low of minus 14. That's all for the weather. Toronto comic Chantal Merostica made history by becoming the first person to portray a gendered, non-binary character on Canadian television. Now they are making the move to producer with their company Queer and present Danger Marty Young has more. 
Meet Chantel Morostica, comedian, teacher, and founder of Queer and Present Danger. Yeah, it's me. A company that produces shows and events aimed at improving the visibility of queer identifying people in comedy scenes across the country. Queer and Present Danger's latest endeavor was a sold out showcase of new comics. It's the H-O-M-O -O virus! There's no cure for it! Burn the Toshiba! held at one of Toronto's most iconic comedy venues, The Rivoli. Bruno Alexander was one of the comics Pyromania. featured on the event. Comedy for me has been important because a way to relate to people. And I think why well, cry about something if I can laugh at it, I think that's become one of the insights that comedy's brought to my life. Yeah. Morosca's shows are already making a huge impact in both the queer and comedic communities. I've had so many, so many messages from the community like, I had a woman reach out to me that she was like, um, that watching me and watching like the shows that I put on, that I, I make it so okay to be gay that she was comfortable in later age like to come out to her family and she, she came out to her family because of the things that I've done. For Spoke TV in Toronto, I'm Marty Young. Tushar, do you have any New Year's resolutions? I actually have a resolution. I was thinking to join a gym. And uh, how did it go? I didn't quite start it yet. The year is young, so you can still do it. Yeah, if you want, you want, you want to join me, we can do it together. Sounds like a plan. All right. So, well, this is it. For more stories, you can follow us on spoketv.ca and also on Twitter. I'm Tushar Sethi. And I'm Sandra Shimprega.